दिभाग्रे नाम तुभम अहवतो सपथ सोपी गरियान जिभाग्रे नाम तुभम ए पर्सन वॉट एवर ही मे इन ही इज वेरी लो बॉर्न बट इफ ही आटर्स द होली नेम ऑफ गॉड by his tongue he becomes the glorious person sapacha sopi sapacha sa sa means dog and patata patata means uh, one who eats dog in india the dog eaters are considered to be the lowest class of the dog eaters so sapacha ta sapacha ta means the dog eater so even the dog eater even if he is a dog eater it doesn't matter if he can chant the holy name of lord then he becomes glorious ahavato sabajato vidyan the digha ve nama do hum so the hari krishna chanting is glorious and anyone who chants the Uh, he becomes glorious the lord krishna says that jab jada charati shreshtha lokasta eh shreshtha satadeva itare janaha sajat pramanam kurute lokasta anuvartate jab jab what man is practice by the uh, principle or the um, superior in every society in every country there are certain class of men who are considered the leaders or the superior men the lord krishna says that whatever is practice by the top list men that is followed by the uh, ordinary class of men sadat pramanam kurute and the top list man whatever he uh, adopts or whatever and uh, scripture or whatever instruction he admits lokasta dhanvartate ordinary class of men they generally fall the whole idea is that krishna wants arjun to become an ideal person ideal person so that ordinary men uh, can follow and generally the practice is also the same uh, any leader if the leader of the people their idea he is idea the leader of the man if he is idea the followers also become idea and if the leader of the society or country is not an ideal man then the followers or the countrymen and the members of the society they are also uh, on the same time now krishna says nami patha si kartavva sri shloke su kinchan na anavapyam aptavyam varta eva chakarmani now she arjun i am the supreme personality of god i have nothing to do in this world for gaining something everyone does something with the purpose of some gain uh, without gain nobody works either spiritual gain or material gain uh, somebody works for material gain 
and somebody works for spiritual gain. There must be some gain. But Lord Krishna, He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Supreme Personality of Godhead means He is full with opulence. All opulence. Now, what are the things we generally people uh, aspire after? People generally they want wealth, they want riches, they want to be very uh, highly rich man, accumulate wealth, millions and millions of rupees. Uh, <clears throat> Then somebody wants to become very strong man. Somebody wants to be to become very beautiful man. Somebody wants to become very learned man. Somebody wants to be very famous man. So there are six opulences are discussed in this all many times, Vaisadyasa Samadrasa Bijasa Jasasa Sriya. There are three, six kinds of opulences, means wealth, strength, beauty, knowledge, and uh, renunciation. Renunciation is also considered as opulence. Somebody has got immense money, immense wealth, but at once he renounces everything and becomes a mendicant. For some cause, of course, ah. there are many instances in political field. Somebody for political emancipation, he gives us everything, all homely comforts and everything, renounces and becomes a very famous man in the political field. Similarly, there are men in the spiritual field also. They renounce everything for achievement of spiritual perfection. So renunciation is also one of the opulence. <coughs> so wealth, strength, beauty, knowledge, renunciation. So these things are opulation, opulence. Now Lord Krishna, He says that I have nothing to gain all these opulences, but because the definition of God is one who has got in full all these opulences, He is God. The definition of God is like that in the basic literature. Uh, everything has got a definition. So the definition of God is that Vaisadyasa Samagrasa, one who possesses <coughs> full wealth, full wealth, uh, and full strength, full and fame, full beauty, full knowledge, and full renunciation, and He is God. So Lord Sri Krishna proved when Lord Sri Krishna was present amongst ourselves, from the history we can see that uh, if we have to believe the history, then he was in full in everything. He was full in everything. Uh, so far, uh, and, uh, uh, as a householder also, when Lord Krishna displayed his capacity as a householder, uh, you will be surprised, perhaps most of you know, that he married 16,108 wives. 16,000. Uh, so somebody may be surprised that how a person can marry uh, 16,108 wives. Yes. A ordinary person like us, or a little more strong person, as, that is not possible. But when the word omnipotency is applied, 
God is called omnipotency, so for Him nothing is impossible. So we have to believe the history and then Lord Sri Krishna married 16,108 wives and He built 16,108 palaces also, well decorated, fully equipped, all marble palaces, and there was no need of lights. The palaces were so nicely decorated with jewels that, that uh, the, the, the light focused by the jewels that would illuminate the house. And another thing, he was present in every house simultaneous. Sixteen thousand wives and sixteen thousand houses, he was present in sixteen thousand expansions by himself. So that is called opulent. These are the opulent. The Lord Krishna was full. Now when Lord Krishna was present on the battlefield of Purukshetra, he was very old man. He was a very old man, although you see his picture just like a young man of twenty years old. Oh. But uh, you, you have seen, some of you, you must have seen the picture of Krishna of battlefield. Arjuna is sitting on the chariot and Krishna is the chariot driver. Arjuna and Krishna was of the same age. But Arjun looks older, Krishna looks younger. Uh, and Krishna at that time had great grand, great grandchildren. Uh, his grandchildren and his uh, grandchildren's children were present at that time, and the whole family uh, extended to uh, about. Mm. Ten million. So this may be astonishing, but for God is nothing astonishing. If it is a fact that everyone is the son of God, sarva joni shu kaunteya sambhavanti murtaya in find in the Bhagavad Gita that in every species of life, in whatever form you may see them, I am the Father of all of them. Now, if He is the Father of all living beings, just calculate how many living beings there are throughout the whole universe or in the creation. In comparison to that, if He displays that He has only ten millions of sons and grandsons and grandchildren, that was nothing more. So these are things. Krishna was equipped in that way. So he says, the Partha, my dear John, I have nothing to gain. Ah. Don't think that I am here, here in the battlefield to assist you just for some remuneration or for some gain. Ah. Because I can have anything and everything at my will only. Nami pārthāsi kastabhaṁ Therefore, I have no fixed duty. In the Upanishad, you will find the definition of Brahma. Nata satājyam karanancha vidyati The Supreme Brahma has nothing to do. That is the distinction. We, we have got everything to do. Suppose we want spiritual perfection. So we have to do something. We have to perform something. We have to act practically. We have to go accept penance. We have to accept just like we are trying to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. So the idea is that I may be elevated to the perfect position. 
Yeah. So, anything, if we desire, we have to do something. But the definition of Brahma and God is that He has nothing to do. The Veda Upanishad says, Natasya Kajam Karanancha Vidrati. He has nothing to do. It still is God. Not that one becomes God by doing something. Nowadays it has been practiced to say that uh, I have meditated so many years, I have undergone so much penance, then I have got, become now God. Oh. oh, God is not manufactured in that way. God cannot be manufactured. Now Krishna, when he was in the lap of his mother, he was God at that time also. Uh, not that he had to grow up and undergo some penance and austerity and vows and go to the jungle or Himalaya or accept some very great spiritual master and so on, so on. Then he became God as it has been now the practice that anyone who that uh, he is a little advanced in spiritual life and if he can display some wonder, oh, he at once becomes God. The so God is not so cheap. Uh, simply by displaying some wonders, uh, just like the other day I uh, uh, narrated the story of Dubbasa Muni. Dubbasa Muni was a great yogi. The yogis can display many wonders, many wonders. Uh, I, in my childhood, one, I had got one tutor, so he was telling about his spiritual master, he was a yogi, that uh, uh, he said that when he visited his spiritual master, who was a yogi, his spiritual master asked him what he want to eat. And because my teacher uh, knew that his spiritual master was a great yogi, he wanted to uh, have a taste of uh, uh, kab, uh, pomegranates of Kabul. In India, pomegranates of Kabul, Afghanistan, that is very famous. So. His uh, spiritual master says, yes, you'll find it in this room, you can see it. Uh, so he saw that just it has been taken from the tree of pomegranate and the juice was falling down, you see. So these wonders can be played by yogis, you see. There are many yogis still living, they can manufacture gold. They can manufacture gold. Uh, the process is that they can eat, uh, I am to say, what is called? Para. What is the English of para? Uh, that uh, I mean liquid metal, white? Mercury. Mercury, yes. <laughs> yes. Mercury. They eat mercury. They eat mercury and after the next morning uh, they uh, pass urine. And in that urine they put some copper coins, just like you have got said. And when it is heated, the copper coins becomes gold. And it is a chemical, uh, theoretical truth that the mercury, molecules of mercury and molecules of gold are almost similar, only one molecule is different. So mercury can be turned into gold. That is a chemical fact. And we have got information from Brady scripture that formerly uh, uh, gun metal, gun metal mixed with mercury could be uh, transformed into gold. So these are some of the chemical process, physical process 
which is being done by scientific advancement of knowledge. There are many yogis who can do by yogi thought. Just like by physical process. Uh, now people are trying to uh, travel in the space, but the yogis can travel in the space very swiftly, more swiftly, uh, swifter than any Sputnik. Just like the other day I narrated the Dudbhasamani, travel all over the space in the universe and outside the universe, and he came back within one year. So, uh, therefore Krishna's another name is Yogesa. Yogesa. And there are many yogis and many yogi principles. But Krishna is the master of all yoga. Oh. See, if ordinary yogis, they can display some wonders, so why not Krishna? He is the yogesa, he is the lord of all yogis. <coughs> so, by performance of uh, this yoga prakriya, or the um, yogic mystic powers, one cannot become God. God is different from all of them. So Krishna was that God. So He is manifestation. He is a word. Now here He says what I was going to explain from Vedic scripture. The Krishna says, Nami Parthasi Kartabham. I have nothing to do. He has nothing to do, still he is so powerful. Yes, that is confirmed in the Vedic scripture that uh, uh, the death and the uh, Brahma, the nature of Brahma is described like this. Natasatajam Karananchivita. Uh, the nature of Brahma is that he has nothing to do. Uh, he has nothing to do. That is the difference between God and ourselves. We have to do everything to achieve a certain aim. But God has nothing to do. Natasatajam karanam jaliddha. Natasat sama adhikasta vishyate. And nobody is found who is equal to him and uh, or greater than him. Nobody is found. That these are the definition in the Vedas, Vedic literature. That God has nothing to do. Nobody is equal to Him and nobody is greater than Him. That means everyone is below Him. Everyone is below Him. Nobody can be equal with God. Even such great demigods like Shiva, and Brahma, they are considered to be the highest demigods. It's still, in the scriptures it is saying that nobody should bless all these demigods, even Shiva and Brahma, on equal footing with Vishnu. Vishnu is the supreme personality of God, a Krishna. So Krishna has nothing to do. God, who is actually God, he has nothing to do. He has nothing to do. He is God from the very beginning. And He is all-powerful with all opulences. That is the God. So Krishna says, I have nothing to do. Trisu loke su kincha. Not only in this earth, but in the three worlds, anywhere. Anywhere I can go. Anywhere I can walk. Anywhere I can see. But still I have nothing to do. No anavatyam aptabhyam. It is not that I am deficient in my possession. We work because we find deficient thoughts in any power, in any either spiritual power or material power. We have to work because we are deficient. So Krishna is not deficient. 
so that he has to fill up the deficiency. No. No, about them. So, it's still Bhattvai was a karmani. Now he says that, Arjuna, you see that still I have engaged myself in the worldly duties. Why? Just to become the ideal man. Uh, although he was not man, he was God, because he was the playing, the part of a man, therefore uh, <coughs> he was, why he was taking part in the battlefield? He has nothing to gain out of it, personally. But why he was taking part in the battlefield? Just for the right cause. Huh? So, he wanted to establish that for right cause there must be fighting. You cannot abolish violence from the world. This is the instruction of Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. He requires violence will be taken. As Krishna induced Arjun to be violent. Arjun wanted to be non-violent, but he wanted that you should, you must fight. This fight is arranged by me. So these examples. These are the examples. Nothing is bad, nothing is good, if it is not purposeful. That is the whole purpose of teaching Bhagavad Gita. Uh, nothing is good, nothing is bad. Everything is good, everything is bad in this material world. But we have to see, just like the common phrase goes, the end justifies the means. The end justifies the means. And that is Krishna teaching here that he has nothing to gain. He is full in himself. Ah. But just to set examples in the world, he was taking part in the fighting because uh, he wanted to establish it that fighting for good, good cause should not be avoided. That was his mission. Then he further he says, Jadi hi ahangana bhakti yang jatu karman natandita ha, mamo vatmanu vatante manusya patha sarvasa ha. Manusya, now, just see, here it is said, manusya means all men. All men. So Krishna is not for a particular society or particular religious community or particular country or particular time. No. Krishna is the leader of all men for all the time in all the countries, in all the worlds and all the universes. So he is not a, a sectarian personality of God. He should not. Manusha, Manusha it is full of number, all men, all men. So he says, if I do not set example by my practical work, then because I am the leader of all and men, all living entities, they will be wrongly directed. Wrongly directed. Uh, now actually, we see also, uh, at least in India, we have got this experience. Now this Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, we always, we must always remember that it is being taught in the actual battlefield. Now, it is a great personality like Mahatma Gandhi. He wanted to prove from Bhagavad Gita non-violence. He was, he was in favor of the doctrine of non-violence. Now, he has seen Mahatma Gandhi's picture that he is always standing with Bhagavad Gita like this. So Bhagavad Gita was his uh, <coughs> life and soul, practically. And uh, in the uh, morning he was having Bhagavad Gita class, in the evening he was uh, having Bhagavad Gita class. So that was his life and soul. But uh, unfortunately, he interpreted Bhagavad Gita in his own way. Uh, 
Allah, he took Bhagavad Gita as his life and soul, so, <clears throat> but he interpreted it in his own way. That is not the way of understanding Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Therefore, <clears throat> now such a great man and such a good man, he was not only a great man, he was a very good man in the world, in worldly estimation. His character, his behavior, his dealing, <clears throat> everything was good. It was ideal personality. But just see, he was killed by violence. He could not stop violence. Yes. He was killed by violence. <clears throat> and his idea, he wanted to make Hindu-Muslim unity in India. The British government fabricated the Hindu-Muslim riot, and, <clears throat> and lastly, at last also, their uh, purpose was fulfilled by partition of India, Pakistan, and India. Now, Mahatma Gandhi worked throughout his whole life just to make a unification of the Hindus and Muslims. Unfortunately, at last he had to see that the Hindus and Muslims were of India were divided into Pakistan and India. And his nonviolence also failed. So, because if we do not follow the right person, Mahajan, Mahajana Jina Gatasta Pantha, then however I may be great in the estimation of the innocent public, uh, that is wrong part. Therefore, uh, the right thing is to follow uh, the succession. Now, we have to follow the principle which Krishna said. Krishna is not advocating, uh, I mean to say, non-violence. You cannot eradicate violence from this world. That is not possible. Uh, because Krishna himself is on the battlefield and he is trying to induce Arjuna. Arjuna is declining and he is inducing. No, you must fast. Jabjadakarati is Krishna. So, we have to follow the footprints of great personality. Dharmasya tattva nihitam guhaya mahaja. In Srimad Bhagavatam, you will find that it has been advised that religious principles should be followed by taking the uh, life examples of great personalities. Religious principles, it has been described in the Bhagavā, that tattva apatishya, if you want to establish religious truth, you cannot establish it by your logic and argument. It is not possible. Because I may be a very perfect religious man, but I may not be a very good uh, and argua, another strong man who can argue very strongly, who knows logic very nicely, he can defeat me, he can make my whole, uh, I mean, conclusion, man and boy. So therefore, simply by uh, argument, a logical conclusion, one cannot reach to the uh, truth, to the religious truth. It is not possible. Tattva apratishtha sutayo vivhinya. Sutaya means uh, uh, reveal scripture. Reveal scriptures. Just like in the world there are many revealed scriptures. There are Vedas, Puranas, the Bible, the Quran, and there are so many religious scriptures also. And if you go on reading them, although the aim is one, still you will find some discrepancies from one to another. Sutayo vivinna. Vivinna means they are divers. <coughs> They are divers. Asutoya vivinya nāsau munidyasya matanga vinyam 
and so far philosophers are concerned, one philosopher tries to defeat another philosopher. That is the philosophical way. <coughs> so, nāsuk manijyas samatang na vinnam dharmas satatang nihitam guhaya Therefore, this uh, truth of religion is very uh, confident. Nihitam guhaya Guhaya means very confident. So, how to know it? The mahajana jīna datasapantha he just try to find out great men, great men of religious life, and you just try to follow. Now, you may have in your, in your own ideas some great men. <coughs> no, they are also checked in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, the twelve different personalities have been uh, described that these persons are uh, great men. So we have to follow uh, their principle and or their in the principle in their disciple succession, then we can fulfill. The same thing is here also described, that Vidatarati is Srisha, Lokaspad Anubhasati. And Sri Krishna himself, <coughs> undoubtedly Sri Krishna is the greatest personality in those days and is still now also, is still in our and not only in India, in all parts of the world, Sri Krishna is accepted as the greatest leader of philosophical presentation of this Bhagavad Gita. Every nation, every country reads it very minutely. So undoubtedly he is a great leader. Now if we follow Krishna, not only we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But we have to follow the principles laid down in the Bhagavad Gita. So that will make our life successful. <coughs> Practically, we have to apply. Uh, we have to apply the principles. Otherwise, <coughs> and the whole attempt will be a failure. That is explained in the next verse. Ussedi Ussede Yu Ime Luka Napudya Karma Sidaham Sankara Satakata Sham Upahanyami Imat Jaha. If I do not place <coughs> idea before the uh, living entity, Praja. Praja means those who have taken birth, they are called Praja. Ja means birth. Ja, janma, janma, and praja, prakishti rupa in a ja, anyone, praja, just like uh, in a state, it is called praja or citizen, who have taken the birth in that particular place. So similarly, uh, Lord Krishna says that if I do not set example in my life, then there will be unwanted population, unwanted population. And actually, that has become, now in the present world, uh, by not following the principles of God consciousness or Krishna consciousness, we have got now unwanted population. Unwanted population. Here it is plainly written, Sankara Sacha Kattasyam. Sankara Sacha means cross beating. And Sankara <coughs> According to Vedic rites, the breeding of child is very nicely enunciated. That is called Garbhadhan Sanskta. Garbhadhan Sanskta. Before begating a child, one has to <coughs> perform some ceremony just to make his mind completely pure and uh, sanctified. Both the husband and wife become sanctified and then they take part in sex life and that child become, comes out a very nice child. So from the very beginning of the birth there are systems uh, how to beget a good population. Uh, so these things are there. Now uh, Krishna says that if I do not place 
they are just like. Then the population will be sankara. Sankara means unwanted, creating disturbances all over. There will be no peace in the world. And actually we are feeling that there is no peace in the world. Why? Because the population has become unwanted. <coughs> and by increasing such population, the natural sequence will be, there must be, there will be some disease, there will be some famine, or there will be some war when the population will be vanquished. That is the law of nature. <coughs> That is accepted in economics also, Malthusian theory, for as most of you know, uh, uh, that uh, whenever there is unwanted population, these three things will naturally, by nature's course, will appear, uh, famine, pestilence, and war, and the population will be finished. So there was some unwanted population at that time also, for which Krishna arranged the uh, war, battlefield of war, uh, battlefield of war. <coughs> so, so we have to follow. If we want very good population, very good generation, uh, then we have to follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the principles of Bhagavad Gita is ultimately described, as we will find in the last day. Sarvadhanman paritajya mamikam saranam Aṁkvāṁ sarvapāpi bhā mokhaśyāmi mahasucha. That is the real religion. Now, in the fourth chapter, you will find that Lord says that I come down in this as incarnation. Yadā yadāhi dharmasya grāni bhavati bhārat. I come down. Whenever there is some flaw in the religious principle, Yadā-yadāhi dharmasya glāni bhavati bhārata abhutthānam adharmasya. The flaw in the religious principle means advancement of irreligiosity. Abhutthānam adharmasya. Paritrāṇāya sādhunāṁ vināsāya ca dhuskritāṁ. Paritrāṇāya sādhunā. Sādhu, sādhu means who are actually following the religious principles, they are called sadhu. Sadhu means good man. There is a description of sadhu also. Titik sabha karunika svida sarabhutana ajata sattrava shanta sadhava sadhu hushara. Sadhu, one who is called sadhu. Sadhu means titik sabha. Titik sabha means a very tolerant, very tolerant, very much tolerant. Hrithik sabha karunika, at the same time very kind-hearted. We find these two characters in the life of Lord Jesus. He was very much tolerant, at the same time kind to the people, generally, you see. So, Hrithik sabha karunika śrīda sarvhūtanam. And his friend, a sadhu, is friend of all living entities. He is not only friend of the human kind, he is friend of the animals, he is friend of the trees, he is friend of the ants, worms, reptiles, serpents, everyone. Sitik sava karunika srira sarvhutana and ajata satru and because he is friend of everyone, he has no enemy. But unfortunately, the world is so insider, even to such a sadhu, there is enemy. Just like uh, uh, Lord Jesus Christ had some enemies, and uh, Mahatma Gandhi had also some enemies, so who killed him. So the, the world is such traitor. Even a sadhu, he has some enemies, you see. But sadhu, from his side, he has no enemy. He is friend of his work. Titik sarva karunita srida sarva ruta nam and ajata satrava shanta always peaceful. These are the qualities of sadhu, saintly persons. 
So, now it comes down. Paritranayo sadhuna, his special purpose of coming down as incarnation is to save the sadhus, because sadhus are always persecuted by the demons, the demonic class, the atheist class. They are always prepared to persecute the sadhus. The Lord comes, Paritrāna sadhuna, just to protect the sadhus or the saintly person and vināsāya to vishvita and uh, to vanquish the miscreants. That is the mission. When Lord Krishna comes or any incarnation of Lord comes, actually not so-called advertised incarnation, I mean to say, he will find all the incarnation and the Vedic literature, they are named there. And not that anyone can manufacture himself as incarnation. Every incarnation is mentioned in the Vedic scripture. When and how, what kind of work he will do, and what a place, which place, and everything in detail is there. So that is, there is charge of the incarnation. Nobody can become an incarnation beyond that chart. Oh, there is chart. Just like there will be an incarnation of Kalki, as several times said, uh, spoken before you, uh, which will take place uh, about uh, mm. four millions of years later on. Still, his name is mentioned in the Bhagavad, and the place is also mentioned. His father's name is also mentioned. Oh. So this is called uh, incarnation. The Lord comes as incarnation for to these uh, for these two purposes to protect the saintly person and to annihilate the atheistic demons and uh, to establish the real purpose of religion. Now the point was that what is the real purpose of religion? That real purpose of religion. Now Krishna says that I am descend for establishing the purpose of religion. For Ittran, yes. Dada Dadahi Dharma Sagrani Bhavati Dharma Sanasthapana Thai. For Ittrana Sadhanam Vinasai to Duskita Duskita now these two things and the third thing is Dharma Sanasthapana Thai and for the purpose of establishing the principle of religion. Now, in the last word, he says that sarva dharman paritsajya mamitam saranam vajya. You give up all kinds of religion that you have manufactured. You simply surrender unto me. So religious principle means to surrender unto God and nothing more but that. That is the real principle of religion. Religion without God consciousness. Uh, that is no religion. At least according to Bhagavad Gita. Uh, without God consciousness, without establishing my relationship with the Supreme Law, there cannot be any religious principle. You may go on advertising uh, some new kind of religious principle uh, every day and every moment they are being manufactured in all over the world. And there are so many uh, groups of religious principles. But here, according to the Bhagavad Gita, real religious principle means to establish your lost relationship with the Supreme Law. We are eternally related with the Supreme Law. Uh, just like the father and the son is eternally related. That relation cannot be, uh, I mean, to cut off. A father may become, a, a son may become rebellious to his father, but he cannot say that he is not my father. Is it possible? No, that is not possible. How can it be possible? Uh, I may disagree with my father in so many points of view, but if somebody asks you, who is your father? Oh, I love to say, this time any. Oh, I have taken as my enemy. Uh, similarly, 
as the father and the son, the relationship cannot be cut off. Similarly, our relationship with the Supreme Lord cannot be cut off. It is not possible. If we want to cut off our relationship with the Supreme Lord or God by artificial means, then the result will be that we shall be more and more unhappy. Therefore, the principal business of the human civilization is to establish, re-establish the lost relationship. The world is suffering by this lost relationship, godless civilization. That should not be tolerated. People should be taught, uh, <coughs> they should revive their God consciousness or Krishna consciousness by all means, and then they will be happy. That is the whole principle. The Lord Krishna says that Ushidev ime lokan kudya karmachid ham sankarasya chakatta shyama upahanyami ma priya. If I do not set examples uh, uh, in this way, then the whole population of the world will be contaminated and there will be unwanted population and uh, then the whole world will appear just like hell. Uh, it is not, it will be inhabitable for good man. Therefore, he says, Satya karman, karmani vidyansa jatha kurdanti bharat. Satya karmani avidyansa jatha kurdanti bharat. Kurjyad vidyansa tatha asatya chikilsu loka sangraham. Chikilsu loka sangraham. Now somebody is fighting for some personal gain. <coughs> Now, uh, at the present moment, sometimes fighting takes place for some personal ambition. Oh. Oh. So, fulfill some personal ambition. But uh, uh, that was not, that should not be the case. To fulfill one's personal ambition, uh, any risky thing should not be taken. Oh. Oh. Now, uh, Krishna says, just like foolish people, uh, they uh, work being too much attached for their sense gratification. Similarly, those who are learned, those who are advanced in spiritual uh, knowledge, they also may work similarly, but not for the purpose of sense gratification. Uh, how it is possible? Uh, just like a, a merchant, a, a mercantile man is doing some business and working very hard day and night to accumulate some money. Similarly, a devotee of the law also can earn money in the same spirit, working day and night, superficially. It will appear just like this man and that man. There is no difference. They are working the same and day and night for earning some money. But the devotee or the uh, man who is uh, established in relationship with God, his expenditure will be different. His expenditure will be not for sense gratification for advancement of uh, God consciousness. That is the ideal man. He, uh, there is no harm if you work very, uh, very much attached to your business or anything. That doesn't matter. The same thing that we have explained and before, that uh, mm. the result should be given to God. That's why Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami, the other day I cited the example, when they retired, uh, they brought home uh, two boats full of gold coins, the millions of people. But uh, before retirement, they spent fifty percent of the accumulation of wealth for God's cause. 
and twenty-five percent he distributed to the relatives. Oh, they also expect some money. And twenty-five percent they kept in the bank for personal needs in uh, and some extraordinary time. So, uh, here Krishna also says, the sattā karmani abhidyāṁsa, just like fool, those who are after sense gratification, uh, 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 as they are working with full attachment, uh, that I must have this money, I must accumulate this bank balance and so on, so on. So similarly, yathā kurdhanti bhārata, as they do work, similarly vidyāṁsa, vidyāṁsa means learned also, may work in that way. But he would spend the money in such a way, that is example. That is example. That example, oh, such a big man, such a rich man, he distributed his money, just like Rupa Goswami, he distributed his money like this. Oh, therefore those who are devotees, those who are following the principles of devotion, they see the ideal. Well, how are a uh, former ācārya or former uh, devotee, um, I mean to say, guru or spiritual master, he was, uh, mm. he had so much money and he distributed in this way. Uh, the distribution money was accepted. Right? So people uh, would follow them. So Krishna advises Arjuna that you also become an ideal man, that you become a fighter for the cause of God. Then you become the ideal man. Your principle will be followed by others, and that is what I want, and that's what I am expecting. Thank you. <laughs> One is checked from doing his rightful duty. That is real violence. And uh, some years ago, um, at Vishnasi, I was not in the Sannyasi days. I went there and <coughs> by invitation of some friends, and they wanted to give me some uh, lectures. That was Gandhi's birthday. And they, uh, they asked me to speak on some non violence. So I spoke. That uh, uh, violence means that to check a person from the discharge of his duties. That is violence. That is my viewpoint. Yes. Now, every man has got uh, his prime duty of life. If that duty is checked, that is violence. So I wanted to place, and that is a fact from Vedic literature, that human life is meant for realization of God consciousness or re-establishing his relationship, lost relationship with God. This is the claim of every human being. Human being at several times explained to the human, human being is distinct from animal life. In this way, that animals, they do not know what is the aim of life. The human, human life is meant for realizing, self-realization. If any civilization that is checking people's progress in the matter of self-realization, that is the most virulent type of God. So, because he, he, people are being checked from the natural advancement of life. This human life is the is the point when one has to end all the miseries of material existence. That is the aim of human life. If people are not educated to that life, if people are misled in other ways, that is the uh, greatest violence committed to the population. Uh, according to, um, uh, I mean, to the scripture, 
they are called uh, atmaha. Atmaha means suicidal, suicide. There is a nice uh, verse that uh, just like this material world is accepted as a great ocean. Now, to cross over a great Atlantic Ocean from uh, New York to, uh, I mean to say, Portugal, just like Columbus came, now we have got great uh, big ships, but we have to face many dangers. Just it is very difficult to cross over the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, uh, but if you have got a very good uh, vehicle, ship or anything else, we can very nicely cross over. Similarly, the example is given that this material uh, life is a great ocean, and uh, this human body is a good boat. Uh, this human body is a good boat for crossing this ocean. And the spiritual master is a good captain, you see. And the, the instruction of Lord Krishna, or a similar instruction, bathing instruction, are favorable wind. Just like if you want to cross the Atlantic Ocean from New York, if the wind is blowing westward, then your um, journey becomes very favorable. So, the favorable wind is blowing by this uh, instruction of the Veda. And there are many stalwart acharyas who are just like the captain, and this human body is just like a good seed. Now, the living soul who is seated in such a favorable condition, if he does not cross over the material ocean, then he is making suicide. He is making suicide. Saiva-atmaha. So we have to take advantage. We have to take advantage of this favorable condition to end this miserable uh, material existence. And if anyone does not take the advantage, then he is committing suicide. That is the version of that. Or either he personally is committing suicide, or any civilization which is checking this process, that is also violent, uh, the most uh, virulent type of violence, uh, because people are misled. Uh, so, this is the idea of the scripture that human life should be utilized only for spiritual self-care.